Hello, everyone. It's Monday, November 21st. Today on The Final Bar, we will hit the market from three directions, top-down, macro, bottom-up, stock-picking, sector rotation. We'll talk about the pullback in energy stocks today, continuing on some weakness last week, and some bouncing higher in some other names. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Final Bar. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller, Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in a cloudy Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close as we break down the activity in the markets using the power of stock charts, data visualization techniques, statistical analysis, all under the umbrella of technical analysis that I would argue is one of your best tools to understand market dynamics and make better decisions. Happy World Cup. The U.S. and Wales are locked in one and one. I was glancing over because we're recording this just after 4 p.m. Eastern. I keep glancing over at the score to see if anything's improving. Looks like a one to one draw to start it off. But plenty of hope left for Team USA and plenty of hope left for the markets, to be honest with you. We'll talk about the overall market conditions. And I'm seeing sort of a mixed bag, which is sort of how I would describe the overall market conditions. I'm seeing breadth indicators that had been very, very positive, now turning a little less positive. And I'll show you some examples of that as well. The VIX getting lower, on the other hand, a lot of individual stocks doing just fine, rotating higher and showing signs of accumulation. We'll get to as many charts as we can during the show. Did want to let you know about the upcoming schedule. Had some really good guest discussions last week. If you missed some of those conversations, check them out on our on-demand platform, StockChartsTV.com. Tomorrow, we have Ari Wald from Oppenheimer. We'll be taking the next couple of days off for the Thanksgiving holiday, so no shows Wednesday through Friday. Hope uh, you all have a fantastic Thanksgiving, those uh, that celebrate here in the U.S. And we'll be back uh, to our regular program schedule next week. And on Tuesday, the 29th, we have Stephen Bigelow. And on Wednesday, the 30th, Javed Mirza of Canaccord Genuity. Let us continue on our show today with our market recap. On Monday, we sort of have three pieces to the approach. We start big picture with the macro discussion. We go one level down to sector rotation. Then we finish off with individual stocks. And let's look at some of the charts and themes that tell the story of this market here. Looking at the S&P 500 overall net negative day, although the Dow briefly was dancing above the zero line uh, in, the, uh, in the morning and again right after lunch. In the end, finished a little bit below zero. The S&P down 0.4%, the Nasdaq composite down even more, 1.1%. The VIX pulling back as well. So volatility looking at the S&P options market uh, coming off and getting near and nearer to that 20 level. We'll look at that chart here in a little while. VIX at 20 has been incredibly meaningful in 2022. As a matter of fact, all the major tops in 2022 have been when the VIX has pulled back to around 20. We're getting nearer and nearer to that level, which might be an important thing to pay attention to as we wrap up going to the uh, the final month of the year here uh, after the Thanksgiving holiday uh, this week. Elsewhere, sort of a mixed results overall for uh, bonds. Uh, the TLT, the main uh, bond ETF, long bond ETF that we track, up about 0.4%. Ten-year yields up a little bit too. Uh, so the end of the day, around 383, but chopped around quite a bit through the course of the day. And the dollar index pushing higher today. Probably the main, I guess, the main uh, indication uh, suggesting why stocks could be down so much uh, on the day. Strong dollar has been a tough environment uh, for stocks and most risk assets in 2022. Checking in on commodities here, gold and silver both down, along with the broader commodity uh, comp complex, as I mentioned, the energy sector, one of the worst. Consumer discretionary looks like just edged it out for the worst performer of the day, but both of them down about 1.4%. We'll get to sectors here in a little bit. A lot of red on the charts of cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin can just not get a bid here. We're now below 16,000. That's what happened uh, coming out of the weekend going into today's uh, trading. Uh, down around 15,800 currently, but got down to about 200 points below that. Ether as well, nearing that 1100 level. Let's look at a chart of the S&P 500 next, keeping a big picture. Talk about some of the major themes here. And you know, my overall take on this market has been you know, labeling this a bear market rally because when you have the market rallying suddenly, but unable yet to pierce the 200-day moving average, I feel very comfortable uh, labeling it a bear market rally. That's what bear market rallies do. 
as you have a big move higher, you see lots of excitement, a lot of optimism, even signs of euphoria, which I would argue I have certainly seen on social media at times. But the S&P or the major averages don't have enough uh, juice to get above the 200-day moving average, not getting above key resistance levels like a trend line taking the 2022 highs, not getting above the first major Fibonacci level. I guess you'd call it the second major Fibonacci level, right around 4,000. That's actually a confluence of levels, taking the August to October range, also the January to October range. Both of those measurements give you a Fibonacci objective right around 4,000 here. So a lot of pieces of evidence kind of aiming to this level where we topped out about a week, a week and a half ago. Um, so I'm not surprised to see us pulling back here. And I think the open question, I, I don't expect a question like this to be answered in a holiday week, which tends to be kind of flat to positive on average, usually lighter volume and, and a lot of exciting things don't tend to happen in a shortened holiday week. It's more of a maintain, uh, you know, with some individual stocks movement, but broader movements don't tend to happen, barring some huge um, surprise. But overall, I would expect the week after sort of the beginning of December is when we answer that question. And, and the question is, do we break out? Do we get enough momentum to push through above resistance? If so, I would expect some real strength going into year end. And I think a year end target of 4,300 makes a ton of sense if you can if you can get above resistance. If we fail to break above that resistance, though, that's where you have to re-engage some of the lower targets. And think about a retest of the lows, which granted would be very strange from a seasonal perspective, but it's absolutely possible. The other thing to remember, and I'll, I'll bring this up when we look at some of the other charts as well, the, the RSI on the S&P 500 stalled out right at 60 about a week and a half ago. Uh, and bear market phases tend to, be ma um, tend to be marked by the RSI not getting much above 60 on rally phases. That was different in August. We actually got above 60 and got all the way to the overbought uh, condition, which is pretty unusual for a bear market phase. So for now, we've stalled out at 60. So, you know, again, do we have enough momentum to break that pattern? Then you will hear me turn very constructive on stocks. Just haven't seen enough of that yet. I did also want to highlight uh, two other maybe charts if I can, uh, maybe a couple more. Uh, we'll start with uh, breadth and the breadth conditions I want to show you are the S&P bullish percent index. I promised that I would show you this if it broke back below 70 and as of today's close, it appears to have done so. So if you look back in 2022, four times has the bullish percent index on the S&P gone, gone above 70. And uh, three of those uh, previous times when we've gone back below 70, that has been essentially marking the end of that bull market or that, that bear market rally phase, an exhaustion point in the rally phase, right? So you saw that in the first week in September, the last week in March, uh, the, um, let's see, third week in August, every one of those times, you saw the bullish percent index get above 70%. That means over 70% of the S&P 500 members point and figure charts have given a buy signal basically most recently. We just saw that confirmed uh, this week. And last week, actually well before the S&Ps, you got the same confirmation from the NASDAQ's bullish percent. And I've highlighted the NASDAQ composite chart and all of the times when the index or the indicator has gone above 70%. And then particularly I'm highlighting when it comes out of that 70% range. That happened in February, in April, in June, in August, and it just happened last week. So these are the kind of indicators that would suggest to me that a rally phase has happened, and now a rally phase is exhausted. Now, this could totally change, and it could rip to the upside, but that would be a very different look than we've seen for all of 2022. So I'm going to assume that that pattern continues until proven otherwise. Last chart we probably have time for in our uh, macro discussion here would be looking at the uh, the VIX. And as I mentioned, right, in uh, normal conditions, sort of on average, S&P going higher means the VIX is going lower. You see that in June, July with higher prices and lower volatility. When prices are going lower, you see the volatility rising, as you saw from August through October. So overall, the trend has been higher S&P, lower VIX. But on individual days, that's actually become disconnected a little bit. Today's one of those days where the market was down and the VIX was down as well. So the market went down on lower volatility in the options market, which again is not unheard of, but that's certainly uh, less common than, uh, than, than the norm. If you look back, this is another one of those indications when the VIX has gotten back down to 20 in 2022, that has essentially been a, a sign of very low volatility and is usually lined up with market peaks. So we're not quite there to a VIX of 20, but we're getting closer as volatility has declined. So when I talk about being in the later stages of a bear market rally, you see these are some of the charts that actually convince me that that's a good way to look at it. All bets are off if the S&P, if the major averages are able to break above resistance with authority. And I don't think we would necessarily get that answered this week, 
But I do think the week after, that's when uh, we will certainly want to be looking at the charts to see which way this market resolves. Our next segment is sector setup. So we've talked about the big picture, talk about the averages accelerating up into key resistance and now stalling out of it. The next uh, thing we look at are sector uh, movements. Had a great discussion with Julius DeKempner last week on this show. Um, so if you missed that, um, you know, make sure you check it out. I think that was on Thursday of last week. Really good discussion about the dollar and using the RRG looking at currencies, thinking about international markets, which is a really um, thought-provoking discussion. I really appreciated that one. What we like to do on a Monday is look at it in terms of uh, the main way I use the RRG, which is looking at sectors. The 11 S&P sectors kind of have this normal clockwise rotation, the cyclical uh, rotation uh, between strength and weakness. And it's happened very consistently over many, many market cycles. It can be a great way of just recognizing leadership and laggardship and particularly shifts in all of the above. Energy has by far been the strongest sector. This is using weekly data, which is where I usually start here. You can see the energy sector kind of sloping uh, north, uh, it's called, we'll call it southeast, right? So still, imp uh, still overall outperforming, but the momentum is coming off because it's coming down on the y-axis. Something to watch, same thing for financials, which have had a really good run, but now starting to come off a little bit. Same with uh, healthcare, the XLV, which is right there. One that might be a little hard to see is the industrial sector, which is this one. We'll isolate that one. You can see the strength kind of heading due northeast. The other one I would highlight in a very similar uh, sort of pattern is the consumer staple sector, again, heading northeast, now back in the leading quadrant. And finally, we have materials. All three of these are heading in the right direction, heading northeast. All three of them are actually in the leading quadrant once again, after going to some of these other uh, areas of the market. Finally, I just want to highlight consumer discretionary, which is the worst performing sector today. Also one of the worst uh, using the weekly RRG data Communication services, I think, by far is the worst uh, consistently, but consumer discretionary, not far off. Now, a lot of that is the weakness in a couple key names, particularly Amazon uh, showing some weakness, retesting uh, long-term lows, and Tesla making a new 52-week low again today, down another 6 7% here. So when charts like this are in a downtrend, a, a uh, an ETF that is heavily weighted to those kind of charts is going to be struggling. But on an equal-weighted basis, I think you're also seeing that uh, that rotation. This is the one of the charts that we spent a good amount of time with, with my premium members at Market Misbehavior in our weekly report that went out Saturday morning. And I'll just sell, sell, uh, share with you briefly uh, one of the takeaways that we had there. If you look at the relative strength of offense over defense, this is what this ratio represents. The XLY over the XLP, close to making a new 52-week low. Didn't quite make it, but really, really close. Now, again, that's dominated by Tesla and Amazon and Home Depot, really, although Home Depot is doing uh, much better than those other two. The equal weighted version did not break out above the June high about a week ago, which I think was very, very telling. It's now rotating back in about halfway within this range that it's been for the last six months. Seeing a breakdown in these ratios, I would argue, is probably an exclamation point on the indication that the market is overall still very much in a bearish phase. I don't see a scenario where the market, thinking of our growth-oriented benchmarks, do incredibly well without these ratios doing uh, much, much better, which is why in August, it started to look much more constructive because one of the two was actually breaking above the June highs. At this point, they're showing way more on the side of weakness than the side of strength. Just to finish off our uh, discussion here about sectors, let's look at the 11 S&P sectors Using the uh, candle glance feature on Friday, this was our featured tool in the power up segment. Talked about the candle glance functionality, some of the different ways you can use this uh, tool on stock charts to look at a group of uh, stocks or ETFs or indexes and start to make some overall assessments on them. What I wanted to do here, as always, is just look at the patterns, right? Which sectors are overall in a position of strength, which are in a position of weakness, and then which ones are in the middle. So let's start with that first group. Which of these charts look constructive? And that would be they're in established uptrends. Uh, they're above two upward sloping moving averages. They're breaking above resistance, those kind of things. Not a lot to be super excited about, but if you ask me to rank them in order of most to least constructive, I probably still put energy at the top of the list. Even though it's pulled back a little bit in the last week, certainly had a tough day today. The XLE was only down about 1.3%. A lot of the individual names down a little more than that. But overall, most recently making a new 52-week high, that is the only sector out of the 11 uh, that can say that and uh, with authority uh, that it actually made a new 52-week high in the last uh, in the last week. That's where energy is pulling back from after making a new high. So while I would much rather see some follow-through to be very constructive on the sector, overall, when I rank order them, that's still probably the strongest chart. 
Then you have another group of charts that are breaking above resistance, breaking above moving averages, while not necessarily the most perfect charts out there. They're certainly showing signs of strength. Healthcare is probably the best example of that. Um, maybe, um, uh, yeah, I would say healthcare probably as I'm looking around here, right? Uh, testing the August high and breaking through it. So all the S&P is not able to get uh, really to its August high. It's up to 4,300, of course. Um, so well below those levels, uh, healthcare actually has already done it and has already broken uh, broken through there. Some of these other ones are just attempting to break above their August highs. Materials uh, comes to mind. Industrials come to mind. Financials certainly come to mind. These are stocks, uh, sectors. Two of those have already broken above their 200-day, which is pretty encouraging, uh, but failing so far to get above their August high, they sort of stalled out here. I've compared this before to what's called a power on stall and to digress momentarily into the world of aviation. A power on stall is when you try to take off of a landing strip. And when you take off, you basically uh, have too steep of an angle. And basically, you the angle is no longer correct and the plane can't fly. Basically, you've prevented the wings from producing lift, which is what you need to go up. As a result, the nose of the plane comes down very, very quickly and you stall. It's called a power on stall. That is exactly what, if you think of a flight path of that kind of thing, that is what industrials, materials, and financials look like right about now. Healthcare as well. The question is... Can they recover from that stall and continue that ascent, continue the takeoff phase and go higher and higher up into the sky? I don't see enough on this chart or these charts to signify that that is what is uh, is going to happen. But those are the levels I would be watching. Industrials at $100 a share could be the most important one to watch. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with my next segment, Shifting Stocks. We'll see you in a minute. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to The Final Bar. It's so good to have you join us every weekday after the close for our show couple quick announcements before we move on to my next segment. First off, we welcome your questions. We're going to do a mailbag segment on Tuesday's show. We'd love to answer one of your questions live on the air. Our email is thefinalbar at stockcharts.com. We're on Twitter at FinalBarSCTV, and we're on YouTube. Put a comment below the video you're watching on our Stock Charts YouTube channel. We'll gather all those questions. Hope to answer one of yours live on the air on next week's show. Actually, sorry, Tuesday's show tomorrow. Also, go to StockChartsTV.com. That is our on-demand platform. We have so much great content. Larry Williams put out his special, uh, his most recent special. I haven't watched yet, but it sounded like a bullish title. So I'm very keen on seeing, what, or a bearish title, that is. I'm very keen on seeing whether he has switched from a very constructive uh, sign at the October lows and turned more negative going through your end, which would be quite a pivot. Uh, otherwise, it's just a very interestingly titled video. But check that and many more out at StockChartsTV.com or on your mobile device. Just search for Stock Charts TV on demand. Let's continue on our show today with our third piece of the puzzle. We talked big picture. We talked uh, sector rotation. Now let's talk individual names in our segment, Shifting Stocks. A number of different places we could go with this. And I just wanted to start with the energy sector. You know, looking at the XLE, the XLE coming off over the last uh, week or so. Now, again, let's not get too negative on a sector that is a week off of making a new 52-week high. And again, the only S&P sector and the only major index I'm watching uh, that can, uh, sort of the US-based index that can make that uh, make that uh, proper claim. However, you've seen some of these names pull back a little bit. And a couple I wanted to highlight are DVN uh, and uh, maybe a couple others, maybe COP will, will hit as well. So DVN is, I think, a great example of the, uh, the strength in this sector, certainly the strength in the second half of last year, the first half of 2022. DVN, a leading name, and at one point, if I remember right, was certainly in the top 10 of our Scooter rankings, if not the top ranked stock, very close to that, uh, if I remember right. Then we had a couple pullbacks here. We pull back to the 200-day moving average in July a couple times, again in August and again in September. And from there, we made a new 52-week high, and that happened at the end of October. From there, the month of November has actually been uh, fairly weak. We made a bit of a lower high here around 74, we'll call it 73, uh, back about a week ago. And now breaking down a little bit, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I like to start big picture, but let's look at the most recent action just to see what's happening here. So now you can see sort of the last couple of weeks coming off of the all time here, the last week in October, we have this big down day um, at the beginning of November. From there, we've stabilized. We really haven't undercut it. You can see the rally the next day uh, here in early November. The second week, we had another distribution back to the same lows, but repelled it and bounced higher. Now we have what's called a hammer candle right at the lows again. So when you have a level of support and then you have a hammer candle, which is basically a downtrend, and then you have an open and close near the same levels, a big lower shadow, limited upper shadow, it looks like a little hammer that suggests you are hammering out a bottom 
popping higher. Before we get too excited, you could arguably say these were these were hammer candles too. We keep drifting lower, so granted, but I think what what may be different here is we're now testing support. So buyers have come in around this level called sixty seven dollars a number of times here, just in the last couple of weeks. So is it fair to assume that the same uh, mentality would allow a new uh, influx of buying power, pushing the price back at the very least a mean reversion back toward the previous swing highs? Absolutely. And I think that's certainly a, a potential uh, move to, to pay attention to. Cop is another one. Again, we could look at any of these uh, energy stocks. Uh, they're all subtly different. So ConocoPhillips, for example, you know, maybe more significant new high breaking above the June high there in October, and then November making a bit of a shorter high there around 135. Now testing the most recent swing low, but still above the 50 day moving average. And I think with these types of names, you want to watch to see we, we were going to pull back in an uptrend that that happens all the time. The question is, do we hold support levels? And then ConocoPhillips, I think the 50 day, which is a little bit below current levels around 119, might be an important level uh, to watch. We break that. The 200 day moving average just broke above 100 to around 102. So watching those areas to see if support can hold, that would allow this to still be an overall a long a long term uptrend, even though you pull back a little bit. Again, just look at the last two years. Nice, consistent uptrend, consistent relative outperformance, which is what is so compelling in the energy space more than anything. Disney is certainly in, in the news a lot, and I don't need to relive all of the uh, fundamental news driven events that have come out with activist investors, with a new CEO, Bob Iger, coming back. Uh, and so forth. They go elsewhere to find the deep dive on the fundamentals. Our goal is to look at the charts and think about how they relate to the news flow. So forget about the news and just look at the chart. What do you see on the chart? What does it tell you about the overall dynamics? Well, here are a couple of things. Number one, we rallied off of a new 52-week low in November, right? So a couple of weeks ago, about a week and a half ago, we made a new 52-week low, got below $90 a share for the first time since way back here in 2020. But the next day, we actually bounced off of that level. So 90 seems like a pretty meaningful level. Those are the July lows as well, right? So $90 is where the stock has found support. Arguably, we got right down to there in October when we had this bullish engulfing pattern. We gapped now above that level today on the news, opened right at the 50-day, but closed back below it. Kind of a classic technical move where you gap higher and close lower. That's usually not a great sign. That means that all the excitement was kind of baked into the new open but then, you know, is there any further upside, any any sign of an influx of buyers getting really excited about buying Disney uh, up at $100 a share? And the answer is not really. You actually were met with sellers that were thrilled to buy down at 90 or 88 or something and sell at 99 and be done. So the price actually comes down around 98. Getting back above the 50-day and following through would be most meaningful. Certainly getting above the previous swing high in early October, excuse me, late October, early November would be another sign of follow through there. Not a lot of earnings this week on a, on a holiday week, but you did have um, Jam Smuckers, a Northeast Ohio company, uh, reporting uh, early uh, before the open today. You had a couple Zoom and uh, Dell reporting after the close today, but I just want to highlight on the on the chart of uh, Smuckers here. You know, overall, I'm I'm struck when I'm looking at this chart just how strong the relative strength has been over the last 12 months. If you bought Smuckers back in November of last year and still held it today, you actually did very well through a very difficult period in terms of outperformance, right? You made a good amount on an absolute basis, but you absolutely killed it on a relative basis, which is what's uh, probably more compelling than anything. We recently pulled back to the 50-day a number of times here in late September, a number of times in October, and a number of times again in November. We've now bounced off of that 50-day moving average. So encouraging move uh, opened lower but closed higher on uh, on an earnings day. Overall, I would I would assume that the benefit of the doubt is higher. Path of least resistance is what I, how I usually describe it. I think the path of least resistance is higher. And what I like about this chart is that we had resistance around 142 to 145. We tested that three or four, maybe five different times here over the course of the last year, but then broke above it up to 150, came back, retested that breakout level, retested the 50-day, and now potentially resolving to the upside. I think that's a really interesting setup, an opportunity potentially to buy a strong stock having recently broken down. Finally, ZM, as I mentioned, reporting after the close. I haven't looked at what's happened uh, after the close. We can check that out actually very quickly here on our symbol summary page as a reminder. We update the after hours trading. We also tell you if the stock is reporting earnings. So still in the after hours session, which can be a little choppy for sure, uh, but currently uh, down about four and a quarter percent, down to around 76.83. So it's currently right around there on our little, little uh, preview chart there. Looking at the daily chart, you know, the, the reason why I think it's important to watch a chart like this is, you know, what is the trend in this stock, right? Take a step back from your monitor. 
undeniably negative, right? Even though you've bounced a little bit from the low in October to making a new swing high in November, I mean, the longer term trend still very much down. The moving averages are sloping downwards. The price overall has spent most of the time below the 50 day. We really haven't followed through to the upside. Even more significant, look at the RSI, right? When was the last time the RSI broke above 60, right? Really indicating an improvement in momentum. It was all the way back here in the middle of last year, middle of 2021. From there, the momentum has overall been in a bearish range. So if you want to get excited about a chart of ZM, at least for me, it's not buying weakness. It's buying new strength, buying indications that there is accumulation. You saw some of that in October and early November, but not enough to trigger an improvement in momentum to the point that I would feel confident uh, feeling strength. It looks like with the earnings miss or whatever negative negativity uh, investors heard on the call, uh, pushing prices lower here in the after hours. We need to wrap the show, folks, and go to the three and three. Let's hit on three charts in three minutes that tell the story of this market environment. And here is chart number one, the NASDAQ composite. And I was looking at some long-term charts uh, earlier today, just uh, thinking about a number of different projects I'm, uh, I'm focused on. Couldn't help but just notice the deterioration of the NASDAQ composite. I really hadn't thought about the percent deterioration. On an intraday basis, we dropped about 38, 37, 38% from the intraday high in November to the low, just above 10,000 there uh, in uh, in uh, the last month, beginning of October, right? So for the last five or six weeks, and this is a weekly chart, by the way, going back uh, five years or so. If you look at the weekly chart overall, you've seen this continued deterioration. We're below the 150-week moving average, and we've retraced 61.8% of this move. So structurally, it makes a lot of sense for the, uh, the NASDAQ to find a bottom right around those levels, which is one of the narratives that I think played very well to the idea that we might have a buyable low there in September and October, right? And a nice rally to the upside. Retracing 61.8% of the way back to the uh, March 2020 lows from the November 2021 high is meaningful. But this also tells me if we do get below then I think we'd have to get below 10,000 to really confirm a new breakdown. Think about the potential downside there. From a technical perspective, there's nothing left Going back to the March 2020 low, that seems like an, an unrealistic downside objective. But I would tell you from a technical perspective, 10,000 is an important level in an important index. Chart number two is FANG, not the FANG stocks, but Diamondback Energy, tick, ticker F-A-N-G. I highlighted some of the individual names in the energy sector in our uh, shifting stock segment. We talked about DVN, Devon Energy, and ConocoPhillips, COP. There's another one in that same uh, space. This is an E&P name. Uh, called Diamondback Energy. We've talked about it many times on the show, coming off of a new 52-week high earlier this month, but just a couple days later, pulling back and testing the 50-day moving average, which encouraging here so far is we traded down to the 50-day, but then rallied back to the upside. Can it hold the 50-day? That would be a big question for energy and really speaking to the renewed strength in energy. Finally, finish the, the show on a high note as much as we can. Let's look at Nucor. This is one of the top ranked scooter stocks back here in the first quarter as energy was doing well. Nucor, NUE, was actually at one point the top ranked stock in our large cap scooter rankings. Things changed quite a bit. A number of times tested support right around a big round number, $100 a share from their rotating higher. Today, breaking above resistance, the August and September highs all around $145 a share. Look how it pulled up to that about a week ago. Pull back. Then this nice stepwise motion, we keep making higher lows all along the way today, following through to the upside, stock up 5% while the market overall was uh, net negative. On charts like this, I think breakouts are really compelling, particularly when you've been in a rectangle pattern, which is basically a basing pattern where you're sideways, right? We're in an equ equilibrium. And then finally, buyers have taken control, pushing it out of that rectangle pattern. See if that breakout level, $145, can hold. If so, pretty constructive chart. Folks, that is a wrap for our show. Thank you so much for joining us every weekday after the close for the final bar. All of our previous interviews, including three fantastic guest discussions, are on our on-demand platform, StockChartsTV.com, or on our YouTube channel. Keep your questions coming and email them to us at the final bar at StockCharts.com. For Stock Charts in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe. Have a great night. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.